Welcome to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm your host, Laura Schoenfeld, a registered dietitian, nutrition business coach, and online entrepreneur with over 10 years of experience in online business. And I'm here to show you everything I've learned about creating a life and a business that nourishes you. On this podcast, we'll talk about the lifestyle habits, practical strategies, mindset shifts, and leaps of faith required to build a healthy body, a powerful mind, a strong spirit, and a successful business. Hey there, welcome back to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm Laura Schoenfeld, your host as always, and today is the second part of a two-part series on the things that successful nutrition entrepreneurs do differently. Now, we covered our first five different things on last week's episode, episode 96, and we're going to go over five more today. These are actions and beliefs that successful nutrition entrepreneurs do that struggling entrepreneurs tend to not be doing. So if you're somebody who has a nutrition business, wants to start a nutrition business, The content from today's and last week's episode is going to be really, really valuable for you. So make sure that you go back and listen to last week's episode in addition to this week. Now, you don't have to listen to that one first. It's not something that necessarily has an order to it. So feel free to keep listening to this episode. But after you listen to today's episode, I would recommend going back and listening to last week's episode 96, where we cover the five other things that I want you to be familiar with. Now, before we get into today's content, I want to talk a little bit about a free three-part training series that I'm running right now. So if you're listening in August of 2021, you can come participate in this free live three-part training series called How to Build a Six-Figure Nutrition Business That Nourishes You and Your Clients. In this free series, I'm going to be breaking down the exact steps that you must be taking in your nutrition business in order to fill your roster with high-paying ideal clients without burning yourself out or spending hours on social media. We've already had one of the live trainings as of the time of this podcast coming out, but you can go back and watch the replay and then you can join us for the next two live videos. Now, we're going to be covering the exact step that I've taken in my own nutrition business to bring in multiple six figures of revenue every year while still having a lifestyle of freedom. And it's the same stuff that I've taught over a hundred other nutrition entrepreneurs like you how to do successfully as well. Because you don't have time to keep DIYing your nutrition business. If you have have a big vision for your impact and income, and if you know you're here to achieve your dreams of owning a successful online nutrition business that changes the lives of many, many people, you need to have this information, and I'm going to hand you the roadmap. I'm going to show you exactly how to build a nutrition business that creates that income and the impact that you desire without feeling overwhelmed or wondering what to focus on first. Last week, we talked about the three core elements of a high income and high impact nutrition business. Now you absolutely need all three of these because if you're missing one, your business is probably not going to go very far. And this week, we're going to be covering the five big mistakes that many nutrition entrepreneurs are making when they're trying to grow an online business. And we're not going to just talk about the mistakes. We're also going to talk about what to do instead. So I'm going to give you five really important strategies and really important ways of acting and operating in your business that's going to allow you to be successful. And then on Thursday, we're going to be covering my entire six-step strategy for building a nutrition business the right way so you can grow your income and your impact more quickly and easily than ever before. These steps have worked for not only people who were brand new to business, literally just getting out of their nutrition program, maybe they just got their dietetics license, it works for them, and it's also worked for people that have been running their businesses for years and weren't seeing the results they wanted to see. So it doesn't matter if you're new to business, if you've had a business for a while, this content is going to be really valuable for you to get to the next level of your business. And as part of this free training, we actually have a worksheet that includes a free nutrition business audit that'll help you check on your business's health and make sure you can make the necessary changes to optimize it. And like I said, this is a great place to start, whether you're a brand new nutrition business owner who wants to build your business the right way so you can get results really fast 
Or if you're an established business owner who wants either more paying clients or the ability to scale past one-to-one so you can reach six figures of revenue, maybe even multi six figures of revenue and have that lifestyle of freedom that you desire. Our next session is going live on Tuesday, August 24th. So be sure to register now so you can catch up on the replay of our first session and watch the two live sessions that are coming up next. You can go to lauraschoenfeld.com forward slash live. That's L-I-V-E. Register there, and once you do, you'll get all the specific details about how to join our live sessions, how to access the replays, and you'll get to download our companion workbook so you can get the most out of this free training. This is really some of my best stuff, and I love sharing it with entrepreneurs like you. It's going to be awesome, and I hope to see you there. All right, so let's get into the five additional things that successful nutrition entrepreneurs do differently compared to struggling nutrition entrepreneurs. And the first one is one that I see happening all the time, especially with new business owners who feel nervous about selling their stuff. And that is discounts. Struggling nutritionists discount their services in order to try to convince potential clients to buy. I've worked with so many incredible RDs and nutritionists who feel like they need to give discounts on their services and programs in order to convince people to invest with them. And in fact, one of my clients that I work with who used to work with another business coach was taught that you should always present a discounted price as an early bird offer for a group program. Now, when I asked this client when that early bird price was going to expire and the actual price of the program was going to be what people were paying, she actually didn't know. She thought that maybe it was in the last couple of days of a program launch that the actual price would be given. But really, the insinuation was that everybody that signed up was going to get this quote unquote early bird offer. So essentially... What this means in my mind is that she was told to create a fake price for her program and to create a fake discount to make people feel like they were getting a deal. And like I said, that's how I interpreted it. I could be totally wrong, but if for weeks you're offering a quote unquote early bird offer, an early bird price, and then maybe in the last day or two, you are actually selling it for the price that you said it's going to be, in my mind, that's a fake discount. Now, I don't believe in using weird and borderline manipulative pricing strategies that suggest a program is discounted when it's actually not. And honestly, I don't think this is a good way for nutritionists to build confidence in their services or for their ideal clients to feel like they're actually getting something of value. I truly do not believe you should have to discount your program at all in order to sell it. And that's because successful nutritionists are confident in the value that they provide to their clients and they stand firm in their prices. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you can't offer early enrollment pricing, beta pricing, or any other type of pricing strategy that provides a short-term price reduction on a program or product. I use price reductions all the time. Like for example, when I launch a beta, I typically will sell it for 50% of what I plan to charge for it in the future. But it's not a fake discount. It's not me saying, oh, I need to give people a discount in order for them to get into that program. My philosophy is to create an offer that is designed to provide a client with an incredibly valuable transformation in as little time as possible. And when setting your price for your services, you should be choosing a price that feels great for you and you should feel like the client is getting an incredible return on their investment. So that amount of money needs to be an amount that you're excited to receive for the service that you're about to provide. So if you're giving a discount and like not super excited about offering the discount, but you're just desperate to get a client, that is not a good way to be setting the price for your services. And it's not necessarily going to be the best experience for the client either. You want to make sure that the client really feels like the investment was worth it, that they feel like they've gotten more out of the experience than what they paid. And they should be feeling like that investment is something meaningful to them. Now, I know it can be hard to measure the value of a health transformation, but it's definitely possible to create a program that provides multiple times the value of what somebody's investing. You really want to feel like both people are getting the value that they desire out of the offer, both you and the person that you are selling the service to. This is what I call a win-win offer. 
Your client wins because they get an incredible transformation that can truly change their entire life moving forward. And you also win because you get compensated appropriately for the value that you're bringing to their lives. I promise that you do not need to create shady discounts and pretend deals to get somebody excited to say yes to working with you. The most important thing is that both people feel excited about what they are investing in. You're investing your time and your energy into working with that client, and that person is investing their money into working with you. We're going to talk a little bit more later about money, so stay tuned because it's so important for us to have the right viewpoint of money for this idea of a win-win offer to work, but just know that discounting your services is not the best way to get people to say yes to working with you. So the second thing that successful nutrition entrepreneurs do differently is that they're excited to regularly promote and offer their services to the people that need it because they know how much their clients' lives can change when they work together. If you're afraid to talk about your services publicly, I wonder, have you ever asked yourself why? Is it because you feel bad asking for money for a service that you're going to provide? And do you ever feel like you're stealing from people when you share about your premium price nutrition consultation or coaching services? It does not have to be this way when you create a business that nourishes both you and your clients. The cool thing about creating those win-win offers that I was just talking about, one where you and your client both feel taken care of and provided for, is that it makes it a lot easier for you to promote your services in an authentic and non-sleazy way. Because it's really those struggling nutritionists that feel icky or embarrassed about promoting their paid offers, and they rarely, if ever, do it publicly. I wonder if you've been there, where you have this great service to provide and you know how much it can help people, but you feel so worried about how people are going to perceive it if you talk about it. But I really think that if you truly believe in your offers and services, that you'll start to realize the importance of getting them out there into the hands of people who need them, and you won't worry so much about the people who are going to criticize you or even think negatively about you because you're talking about your offers. Now, this is where effective messaging, marketing, and promotional strategy comes into play. Many dietitians and nutritionists have this notion that promoting their paid offers is icky and they just feel sleazy about it. So either they hardly mention them at all or they literally never talk about them. And they're just hoping that someone will ask about their services maybe after they've had their minds blown by all the free content they're receiving. I wonder if you've ever been there where you're on social media or you're blogging or you're creating a podcast, you're doing some kind of content production and you're giving so much value. You're just giving, 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 and you're just hoping that somebody will enjoy the free content so much that they're just going to reach out to you and ask if they can work with you. That might happen once in a while if you're lucky, but you're much better off purposefully talking about your services and inviting people to work with you on a regular basis. And when your paid offers are designed in such a way that they help people get life-changing health results, there's absolutely nothing sleazy about telling people about them. Think about it this way. If you had the cure for cancer, would you feel sleazy telling every single person that you knew about it? I sure hope not. I feel like it's something where if you had that cure and you knew it was going to work for people and you knew it was going to help thousands of people who needed it, you probably wouldn't stop talking about it. And while your programs and services may not literally cure cancer, when they're designed properly, they truly can help people attain life-changing results. I've worked with so many clients who have been able to get pregnant. They've eliminated debilitating gut or hormone issues. They were able to reduce or eliminate their joint pain. And many of my clients work with people who have been able to heal from eating disorders and do so many things with their life because they were able to get their health on track. And while we can't put a price tag on somebody's health, you better believe that these are high value results that can have a massive ripple effect through somebody's life. And this can even affect their family and friends' lives too. I mean, I've worked with people who now have children that exist because the work we did together was able to help them get pregnant. So it has a massive, massive ripple effect. And I honestly don't even think we can imagine the value that we can bring to the table when we help someone attain these incredible results. 
So if you're feeling a little bit weird or icky when you're talking about your paid offers, I want you to do a little introspection and I want you to ask yourself, what is the true value of your services? And in what ways can those services impact somebody's life even beyond the time you spend with that person as a coach or consultant? Once you're clear on how much value that you bring to your clients' lives, you will start to feel a lot more confident in sharing your paid services with the world. Now, if you're not sure about the value of your services and you feel like maybe you can't help people, that's a totally different story. And first of all, if you are educated in nutrition and you have helped even one person improve their health, then you are capable So I just want you to remember that because imposter syndrome is a super common feeling for a lot of nutrition entrepreneurs, and it's something that unless you really start believing in yourself and start getting your stuff out there so that you can actually help people, you're probably always going to feel that way. Now, something that we do in my Nutrition Business Accelerator program is that we actually help our clients come up with an effective strategy for helping their clients get results consistently. And that's something that can build a ton of confidence in your offers, and it can create this nice snowball effect of feeling more confident, being more excited about sharing your offers with people that need it, and feeling less embarrassed to be talking about the services that you have because you just know how life-changing they are. We don't have time today to talk about that, but that is something that is so important. If you're not sure if you can get people results, you need to be working on your methodology and make sure that you've put that together in a streamlined, straightforward way so that you can build that confidence and really believe that your services can change people's lives. All right. So like I said, we're going to talk about money and that's what our third of the five things that successful nutrition entrepreneurs do differently that we're covering today. Struggling nutritionists typically feel guilty for taking money for their services. And because they have this guilt, they tend to price their offers as low as possible. Whereas successful nutritionists know that money is simply a form of energy and they're excited to offer incredible value in exchange for a premium investment. Now, I want you to ask yourself, do you ever feel guilty charging money for your nutrition services? If so, you're definitely not alone. Some of my most empathetic clients have struggled really hard with this one because they believe that health is a human right and that charging money to help someone achieve better health is just flat out wrong. And some of my clients have even said to me that it feels like they're stealing from people. But that honestly, to me, doesn't make any sense because let's just look at the definition of stealing. Stealing is taking something, and a lot of times that's money, taking something from someone without their permission or consent. And typically when you're stealing something from someone, you're doing it without giving anything in exchange. Now, when you're selling your nutrition services in an ethical way, not only are you getting full consent from your client during the sales process, but you're providing tremendous value in return for the money that they're giving you. So this idea that you're stealing from people by charging for your services is just completely not based in reality, and it's just a belief that's negatively affecting your ability to be successful in your business. And in reality, money is just made up. It's just a man-made representation of value that we use to trade with each other. It's a form of energy that gets circulated between people. If you think about why money was created, it was created so that we could trade products and services with other people without having to carry things around with us. So instead of having to go to the market to get your food and bringing a goat with you to trade for somebody's produce, you could bring money with you that you had earned maybe from selling a goat and use that money to pay for the produce that you wanted. So it's really just a form of energy that is reflected in the thing that you created. So if you're creating a service, a program, an online course, all of that energy that you put into creating that offer, along with all the energy that you put into learning how to help people with their transformation. So that time and money and energy that you spent learning about nutrition and becoming skilled and understanding the human body and understanding biochemistry and all that fun stuff that we learned in nutrition school. All of that energy that you put into that is what you are bringing to the table and the money that your client is bringing to the table 
came from some kind of energy that they put out into the world. So really that money that's changing hands in any circumstance, whether you're spending money or somebody's giving you money, it's just an exchange of energy. And when you create truly transformative, life-changing programs and services, your clients are truly getting more than what they've put in for that investment. And here's another thing to consider when it comes to charging premium prices for your services. When your clients invest in themselves by investing in your services, they're putting something that they value behind their commitment. And what that typically means is that they'll be much more likely to show up and fully participate in their own healing journey. They've put that money down and they're saying to themselves, this is something I'm going to take seriously. I'm going to take it so seriously that I'm willing to invest a significant amount of money in it. And they're actually putting that as a down payment for their own commitment. My coach, James Wedmore, always says the transformation starts with a transaction and it's 100% true. I've experienced it for myself. My business coaching clients have told me that they felt like they were a new person the minute that they pressed pay now when they were signing up for my coaching programs. And I bet you've had that experience before too, where you invested in something and it felt like you were committing to a new version of yourself. Your clients are going to have the exact same experience when they invest in the services that you're providing because they're truly investing in themselves. So if you're falling into that trap of charging rock bottom prices for your services, you're struggling to pay your bills while your clients are not even as committed because they haven't invested that much to work with you, who is actually winning in that situation? Certainly not you. And I honestly don't think your clients are either because they have not put that money down payment into their future, into the transformation that they want. They have not made that commitment to themselves and to the work that you're going to help them do. And so you charging minimum prices is not doing them a favor either. Part of creating those win-win offers that I've been talking about is charging enough for you to feel fully compensated for your time and energy. And like I said, you've spent years accumulating knowledge and skills those skills that are necessary for you to be able to help your clients. And we're not even going to talk about the student loans that you might have, but you've spent so much time and money to get to the place where you can even help someone and you need to be compensated for all of that work and all of that knowledge and all of that expertise. So if you find yourself struggling with unhealthy views and beliefs around money, I want you to ask yourself who is actually benefiting from you holding on to the belief that your services should be as cheap as possible. You deserve to have a business that nourishes you too. And part of that is nourishing yourself financially. And you'll be a much more capable healthcare provider when you're not working yourself ragged and scraping by financially. You're going to win when you are able to take care of your financial needs and desires, and your clients are going to win when they put those investments into the work that they're doing and really take it seriously. So everybody wins when you charge premium prices. And if you're feeling any sort of resistance to that, then just know that working on your money mindset is going to be a huge part of creating the business that allows you to help more people and allows you to take care of yourself. All right. So hopefully that wasn't too triggering. I know sometimes talking about money can get people a little uncomfortable. I know I've been there before and it's something that I still consistently work on because I'm probably a lot like you. I really care about people and I never want anyone to ever feel like they were taken advantage of or that they wasted their money when they decided to work with me. So that's why in my business, I'm always looking at how do we make our programs and services a no-brainer for people as far as the price point is concerned and really give them many, many times the value of what they're investing so that they can get the results that they dream of and get that transformation that they're working towards so that they can have the life that they want to have. Okay, so once you've gotten through some of these things around money and discounts and offers and all of that, maybe you start to see some progress in your business. You start to get more clients, you start to get busier, and this is where the fourth thing today is going to come into play. Struggling nutritionists are the ones who do everything themselves and never feel like they have enough time to get it all done. Whereas successful nutritionists are the ones who can stay in their zone of genius and eliminate, automate, or delegate everything else. So let's talk about this because, again, this is really one of the new problems that a lot of nutritionists run into once they've gotten their business off the ground and they start to see some success. 
they start to get that traction and then start to fall into what I call the solopreneur trap. And that's because they get so good at taking care of all the necessary to-dos in their business, many of these tasks being things that need to get done but are what I would call low value, and they're spending so much time doing those type of tasks that they're not really moving the business forward, and they don't realize that these tasks could be done by someone that is not a trained nutritionist, or in many cases could even just be done by a piece of software. And if you're someone whose client schedule has started to get busy, you may be finding yourself wearing all the hats in your business, from social media marketer to customer service rep to operations manager to administrative assistant and everything in between. And that business that you started for more freedom can suddenly become a prison of nonstop work. And what's worse is that some nutrition business coaches are telling their clients to save money on systems like client management software and other types of software that can help make your life a lot easier. And they're telling people to just do everything manually using tools like Google Drive and Google Calendar. Now, I am not poo-pooing these tools. I use tons of free tools in my business, including Google Drive and Google Calendar to help me run my business. But I do not rely on just free tools duct tape together in order to save money. This might work if you have just a couple of clients, but if you start to get even remotely busy, you're going to be spending half your time doing things like manually scheduling and rescheduling clients, manually scheduling social media posts, trying to keep track of notes and documents that go missing, and wasting time doing a bunch of things that could have honestly be done automatically by a piece of inexpensive tech. You need to remember that you do not get any special brownie points or gold stars for doing everything yourself in your business and staying busy all the time. I really think this is a belief that's pervasive with so many nutrition business owners because for whatever reason, whenever my clients start to get less busy, they start to get more efficient with their time, they start to have this sense of guilt that they're not working hard enough. And First of all, that's nonsense. Second of all, in my opinion, a business that allows you to have downtime is actually exactly what we want to build. So if you think that you need to be doing everything manually and you feel like it's not worth the small investment to pay for either assistance from like a VA or some kind of team member or even investing in an inexpensive tech piece like Practice Better or Kajabi, one of these tools that allows you to run your business more easily, this is really going to cause problems in the future. And maybe you're already experiencing those problems where you're trying to keep everything together and you're forgetting things, you're losing track of things, and you're spending half your time doing things that could be done completely with that software. So like I said before, the most successful nutrition entrepreneurs that I work with and the ones that are able to grow their business past six figures to even getting to multi six figures, and some of them are heading towards seven figures, They are the ones that adhere to the eliminate, automate, delegate strategy. Eliminate means that they eliminate the work that doesn't have to be done at all. There's a lot of stuff that we do in our businesses that when we really think about it, we can say does not need to be done. I am all about minimalism and essentialism in my business, and I am constantly looking for ways to cut stuff out because ultimately, the more simple my business gets, the easier it is to run, the better results I can get for my clients, and the less I have to work, the less my team has to work, and the more efficient we are at doing the thing that we're here to do. So elimination is the first step because honestly, you do not need to be automating or delegating work that doesn't need to be done. Now, once you've eliminated that work that really doesn't have to be done at all, then you can automate the work that is possible to be done by a good piece of software. I've mentioned scheduling and rescheduling clients. That's something that I use the platform Practice Better to do, not only for myself, but also the vast majority of the people that I work with use Practice Better as well to do the scheduling as well as a bunch of other things in their business. So if you're manually doing the scheduling with your clients, just know that you're wasting a ton of time doing something that you don't actually have to be doing at all. The software can do it for you. And honestly, I think a lot of your clients are going to appreciate having access to a tool that can allow them to schedule and reschedule when they want to. Finally, when you've done the things that can be automated and you realize that there's some work left that needs to have that human touch, that's where you can start to delegate things. There are going to be things in your business that have to be done and can't be done by a piece of software, but probably do not need to be done by you. And that's where hiring help can really be a life changer for your business. 
I have just gotten obsessed with hiring people this year. Right now we have four people total that work consistently on our team. And then we have a bunch of people that are either independent contractors or businesses that support our team in some way, whether that is bookkeeping or podcast editing. And so we have a ton of people supporting the ability to run my business. And it is amazing to know that so many people are doing the work to get the things done that I'm doing. And it's really easy for people to look at a business like mine and just assume that I'm doing it all myself. But I really have an army of people that are helping me. And that's something that I teach my clients how to do so that they can really focus on the work that's in their zone of genius. And when we talk about your zone of genius, that's the work that only you can do. Typically, if you are a personal brand business like me, where you're the face of the business and you're the one that is generating the content, generating the sales, really the one that is spearheading the growth of the business, then that is the kind of work that's going to be the actual zone of genius work that you need to be doing. So working with your clients, creating programs and services, you know, coming up with your launch strategy, that's the work of the visionary in the business, which is you. And all of that other stuff that needs to be done, but does not have to be done by you can be delegated. If you want to hit six and multi six figures in your business without running your mind and your body into the ground, you have to let go of the idea that you need to do it all yourself. That I can do it myself mentality might have gotten your business off the ground in the first place. And yeah, being scrappy can help you make a lot of progress in the beginning, but it's not going to help you build something that creates true time and financial freedom. And it's probably going to create a pretty stressful situation when you feel like you can't even take a day off because if you don't do the work, it's not getting done. So do the eliminate, automate, delegate strategy and make sure that you are staying in your zone of genius because that is what successful nutrition entrepreneurs do. All right, so we have our last one now, five of five today and really 10 of 10 if you've listened to last week's episode. And we're going to circle back to the money conversation because investing in yourself is something that successful nutrition entrepreneurs do. They invest in coaching and mentorship as soon as possible because they know that's how they're actually going to get more money in their business. Whereas struggling nutritionists are the ones who are waiting until they have enough money to invest in coaching and mentorship. Now, this might be a little bit controversial, but I've been thinking about this lately because if you're like me and you went to school for nutrition, maybe you went to grad school like I did, and you're still paying off your student loans, I want you to ask yourself, why is that the kind of debt that you feel is appropriate? Why is it that we have no problem borrowing tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars from the government to pay for our undergraduate and graduate educations to become nutrition professionals? But when it comes to investing further in our growth and development as business owners, particularly when it comes to investing in a coaching program or getting a mentor, suddenly we're penny pinching and budgeting to pay with cash like a Dave Ramsey devotee. I don't get it. I feel like we are just brainwashed to believe that formal education is the only thing that matters and that learning from other people who have their own programs or learning from people who have done these online businesses the way we want to do it, that suddenly that is some kind of reckless investment. And many of the nutritionists and dietitians I talk to who want to get help, they believe they need to have enough money saved up before they can invest in getting educated in how to grow their business. But that is totally backwards because beyond sheer luck, how are you going to save up enough money to invest in your business if you're not really making any money in your business? How are you going to make more money if you don't even know how to make money? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should risk having the light shut off on you or losing your home because you can't pay your mortgage because you spent way too much money on business coaching with nothing to show for it. I totally get the fear as well, because for me, one of the first big business investments that I made left me with over $20,000 in credit card debt at the end of the year. Now, spoiler alert, I survived. I made the money back. Yes, it was stressful. Yes, it was upsetting. I had invested in a business coaching program that was way more advanced than I really should have been investing in. Unfortunately, the people running the program didn't really do an effective screening process to make sure that it was the right fit for me. And because I was willing to spend the money, they took me on. 
Now, I don't regret it because I learned a lot. And even just that experience of investing excessively and not really being able to get the return right away was a really good learning experience. But ultimately, that is not something that I ever want to go through again. And I'm sure you don't either. So I understand why so many people are afraid to invest significantly in their business education because there are some shady business coaches out there who are more concerned about their own bank account than the success of their clients. And even if a business coach is awesome, that doesn't always mean that you're ready for the level of investment that they have to offer. But the fact is that the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones that are consistently investing in their growth as a business owner, and they're always looking for ways to speed up and simplify their journey to reaching their financial goals. And the other fact is that the most transformative business coaching experiences are usually the ones that feel like a stretch financially. Now, when I say a stretch financially, again, I don't mean that you're taking a second mortgage out on your house to pay for something, but if you're buying like $97 products here and there, trying to piecemeal learning how to run your business, just ask yourself, like, are you actually making a significant enough of an investment to really experience the kind of transformation that you want to have? Because just like our clients, when we put a significant investment of money behind our commitment to getting results we're far more likely to show up and do the work to actually get the transformation that we want. And typically those big transformations that we want do require a bigger commitment to a more significant program. And that's why I'm such a big fan of informed investing in business mentorships. Now you don't need to join a $30,000 mastermind for your first coaching program like I did. And if you're like me, you probably won't even get the full benefit of an experience like that if you're brand new to business. That's what I mean when I'm talking about informed investments. An informed investment is one that you, again, feel like is a stretch and it puts you outside of your comfort zone, but it doesn't put you into the situation where you are struggling to pay that money back month after month and you're just going further and further into debt. You do not need to invest in something like that to get started. And so if you're brand new to business, I would recommend starting with an investment in the four-figure range. So four figures means it's under $10,000. Now, a little bit more than that, you'd probably be fine, but don't have your first program be something that's like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Start small, start with something that is promising the transformation that you want to get. So it's focused on the exact type of business that you want to grow. It's focused on the stage of business that you're in. So if you're a beginner or somebody that's just getting things off the ground, you want to make sure that you're investing in a program that helps you set the foundations. And these kind of programs, when done well, can help you get to that next level of growth that'll prepare you for more substantial investment like a private coach or mastermind. Now, I work with people privately. I run a mastermind, so I definitely understand that there are lots of things that you can learn at those higher levels, lots of amazing goals that you can reach when you invest at that higher level. I invest all the time in my own business growth at the multi-five-figure mark, so it's something that I'm totally a fan of, but again, you need to prepare yourself for that level of investment. You need to start with something that is designed to help you get from where you are now to the next level and not try to skip ahead and not really lay that foundation. And ultimately, your learning as a nutrition entrepreneur should never stop, whether that be learning more about your craft, getting better at helping people, maybe you're getting educated in functional medicine or intuitive eating or coaching strategies, just learning how to be a better nutritionist. I think those are great investments, and anytime you can learn more about how to be better at what you do is always going to be paying itself off in your business and in the impact you can have. And I also believe you should constantly be learning more about the business strategy that It'll help get your programs and services out to more of those people who need them. Because when you have a really awesome transformative service, it's your responsibility to make sure that as many people as possible are going through those programs and getting the health transformation that they desire. Ultimately, I recommend that you stop looking at business coaching as a cost that you need to save up for and start looking at it as an investment that'll pay itself out. One that will take you to levels of success that you never even realized were possible. 
And again, you don't have to start massive with that investment. Start at a level that feels stretchy, feels a little nerve wracking because again, it's gonna create that transformation just from making that transaction. But get your foundation set and then once it's set and once you're starting to see the progress rolling, that's when you can look at investing at a higher level service like a mastermind or a private coach that can help you take things to the next level. All right, so those are the five additional things that successful nutrition entrepreneurs do differently compared to struggling nutrition entrepreneurs. So the first is that they do not discount their services because they're confident in the value they provide. The second is that they're excited to regularly promote and offer their services because they know how much their clients' lives can change when they work together. The third is that they're constantly reevaluating their relationship with money and they don't fall victim to that belief that money is evil. Number four is that they stay in their zone of genius and they eliminate, automate, or delegate everything else that's not in that genius zone. And number five is that they view continued training and mentorship as an investment and not an expense. And they know that their learning doesn't stop when they graduate their nutrition program. All right, so that is it. Those are my top 10 things that successful entrepreneurs do differently. They think differently, they act differently, and they just operate differently in their business. I hope that this has been valuable for you, and I would love to hear from you on Instagram if you want to DM me and let me know which of these 10 things was the most valuable for you or resonated with you the most. I know some of these can get a little controversial, especially when we're talking about money, but honestly, if you're going to be running a business, you have to be able to have these kind of conversations and you have to be able to assess your beliefs about these things because a lot of times it's our beliefs and not our actions that are affecting the results that we're getting in our business and in our life in general. All right. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And if you want to get into more details about how to grow a successful six-figure nutrition business, then I would love for you to participate in our free training series that's happening the month of August in 2021. And we're going to go over specific steps you need to take to have the success in your business that you desire. And I'm going to give you the entire roadmap to building a six-figure business that nourishes both you and your clients. All right. Well, it's been great hanging out with you for the last 45 minutes or so. And I'll look forward to seeing you here next week on the Fed and Fearless podcast or inside our free live three-part training series, how to build a six-figure nutrition business that nourishes you. I'll see you there. Are you a dietitian or nutritionist business owner that wants to create an online business that attracts, converts, and serves your dream clients? then keep listening because I have a special opportunity that will help you create the profitable, joy-filled nutrition business that you always wanted. In my signature group coaching program, the Nutrition Business Accelerator, you'll learn how to start, grow, and scale your online nutrition business to six figures and beyond so you can experience the financial and time freedom that you desire. Inside the program, you'll learn how to attract high-paying clients who are excited to work with you and willing to pay you the rates you deserve. You'll get training on how to effectively sell your services in a way that feels authentic and converts prospects into paying clients without feeling pushy or salesy. And you'll get step-by-step instructions on how to create programs and services that provide transformative results, leading to glowing testimonials and referrals from your current clients so you can have the greater impact that you desire in the world around you. Inside the program, you'll get mentorship and guidance from me, a compassionate coach who's built her own multi six-figure online nutrition business. So that way you never have to feel stuck in your business again. I created this program to help struggling dietitian and nutrition entrepreneurs get clarity on who they serve, how they serve them, and how they can stand out in a crowded market so they can more easily attract dream high paying clients into their online nutrition business. If this sounds like something you're interested in, go to lauraschoenfeldrd.com forward slash NBA to learn more about the program and get on the wait list. That's lauraschoenfeldrd.com forward slash NBA, which is short for Nutrition Business Accelerator. Doors are opening soon and you don't want to miss out on this one of a kind business coaching opportunity. Let's accelerate your nutrition business together. I'll see you in the program.